this is where things get tricky. The strakes, so that when they come across, need to be bowing out to make the bottom of the boat on the, on the sides, but it needs to twist flat at the front. Now, normally what happens is this, is this piece is just carved in to accept those strakes. We're a little bit thin here, so I'm going to laminate a piece on top. It'll have the uh, advantage of helping reinforce this joint. I just have to uh, cut this in half diagonally. Needless to say, this is going to put my saw at its ex most extreme angle and height, exposing the blade. So if you're not comfortable with it, do it by hand. With the boards cut, the traced line I'm going to take around the front of the prow and also on the stern. Just quickly cut this out with a jigsaw, then match it to the other side, and do the same for the back. So I don't always show you my mistakes, but I do make them. In this case, because this piece wasn't symmetrical, when I went to go and cut the other half, that uh, wasn't going to fit. So I had to go and cut another one. That's better. And for those of you who wondered if this guy was ever going to start using period tools, now's the time. Got myself a bench hook and my plane. I'm just going to start cleaning these shapes up a little bit. Still pretty rough. We'll clean that up once it uh, once we get, start getting things assembled. I've uh, dry fitted everything together. This is where we start using every single clamp you can possibly get your hands on. Um, I've done a little bit of uh, uh, trim work at the top here because the, the uh, rounding of the wood was annoying me, and uh, also trimmed the. Uh, the bow and the stern so they went smoothly into to where we're uh, adding these uh, pieces on the front and the back. Uh, really putsy, so I'm actually going to, not besides the uh, carpenter's glue, I'm also going to use a couple screws from the, uh, that are, that are going to be blind from one, one side so they only have to fight with one side at a time.
if you remember what I said about it being futsy, the uh, problem is because the, the side pieces were, are curved, half the clamps were wanting to slide off and not grip, and the other half were wanting to move everything from where I wanted to, to be attached. So one of the things I've done is I've used rope that I've wound around and then as tight as I could and then jamming in a wedge to tighten it further. Now while the glue is drying I'm going to start looking at the next problem. So this is going to be my first strike. It's going to be coming up here clamped to the underside where I've got that bevel and then we're going to fit it into here. So I only need it to be about this long in here and then I'm going to just notch this area to receive it so that this will end up flush with the outside of that hull piece. Having spent several days carving, I'm now ready to attach them to the keel permanently. One thing to remember when you're designing your head, that this is eventually going to be seen in mostly dark. So if you can have a decent profile, particularly if some light can get through it, um, that looks really good when it's burning. Um, one thing you might want to consider is um, tunnels in through the wood, helps it burn a little faster, and you can end up with some interesting effects of uh, um, fire shooting out the mouths and eyes and things like that. Okay, so get those glued in, and then we'll uh, finally attach those first strikes we talked about. So I've clamped the first strake to the boat. You can see that there's a big gap there because we're coming in at the wrong angle. So I'm going to have to come back. I'm marking with a pencil or actually scribing that first incision with my knife. And then I'll have to start taking back some of that angle back the, the first eight, 10 inches or so, so that it comes in smoothly. <laughs> 